Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations indeed. And this story about uh, a big European breakaway league, um, we all want more information, just like Brendan, about that. And there's a chance we'll get more information in about 35 <clears> minutes' <throat> time because there's, there's a rumoured letter of intent from this new European breakaway coming out at half past nine. If the big six from the Premier League that are rumoured to be on that letter of intent have already signed up to show their intention to create a breakaway European Super League, should that alone be enough for them to face immediate sanctions? 100%. I think that if this breakaway group of teams, this is, for me, a war on football. This is a, it's, it's a disgrace. Um, it's embarrassing. Um, and it goes against everything that, is, that, that, that football's about. It's a close shot for these big wigs. And it's completely and utterly only about one thing, and that's money. The rich getting richer and the others not even being considered. There's no consideration for the history, for the people at the different parts of the pyramid below the top, top teams that they're trying to separate with. It's a disgrace, I can't believe it. How they've got the audacity to do it in the climate that we're in at the moment with the pandemic around the world, people struggling on the streets, people struggling all over the world, mm. and these lot are sitting there in their own little pub somewhere or their own little room, speaking and talking and colluding with this little idea of what they're gonna, they've hatched, and then come out and break it like this. It's a disgrace, and I think even there's like parts of it the, 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 the element of being anti-competitive, it goes against everything that football's about. Relegation, promotion, being rewarded for winning, being punished for not winning. These are things that add to the value of our game that we love. It shows me and screams that these people have no idea what football's about. It's purely a business transaction. That's it. There's no fault for anybody else in the, in the whole pyramid. It's nothing. There's no consideration at all. I can't believe it. We're sitting there. We've had to kind of zip our mouths through, through the game because you want to speak about this. Because oh, you look at your phone, your WhatsApp groups, you look on social media. The people that actually support this game and make it what it is. We've been here for all these times with no fans. Without them, this game don't feel the same. It doesn't feel the same. And they're the people this is going to hurt more than anybody. And the grassroots. I'll let Robbie go on to the grassroots as he's very passionate about that in a bit. But... The people that make this game special are not being considered. It's the people at the top end of the game who are able in a position to make decisions, who are making decisions without thinking about anybody else but their pockets. That includes your former club, Manchester United. Yep, it does. How does it make you feel embarrassed. about that club? I'm embarrassed. And listen, th there's been so much things thrown at the owners over the past years and stuff like that, but this situation now, to be a part of that group, they're going to be a breakaway group and leave everybody for dead, that's an embarrassment. I can't, I can't believe it. And I'm sorry, but I'm a Man United fan. I love the club, but I can't stand by it and support something like that at all. And we've been looking at the numbers. You know, roughly you get 150 million for being in the Premier League. It's about 110 million if you win the Champions League. This is a closed shop of clubs that can't get relegated as founder members of their own European Super League, which would guarantee them about 300 million pounds of revenue every season. Those are the sort of numbers that are being banded about. But those are not numbers that is going to see the money kept in the football pyramid, going to be passed down to grassroots. And if you don't support grassroots football in any country in Europe, football dies. Yeah, you know, what happens to the football pyramid now? Because we know the fantastic, successful Premier League, the money flows down to the National League system, grassroots, the local communities, you know, and... In a, and as Rio's mentioned, you know, in a in a pandemic where we've seen National League clubs nearly go out of business, taking loans, grants, you know, players getting furloughed, you know, and now you hear of these big six maybe breaking away. I think it's an absolute disgrace. What happens to the grassroots? Yeah. You know, and the fans, the consideration for the fans, as Real has so eloquently mentioned. And look, we know that you know Robbie's involved with Macclesfield. We know that Liverpool and Man United, Arsenal, Man City, Tottenham. We know that that big six are so far detached from Macclesfield, but it feels almost like they're so far detached now from the other 14 in the Premier League. They just want to go it alone for their own good, not for the good of the fans or anybody else. Well, from what we've heard and picked up in the short time that we've been you know, here with the, the semi-final, it's, it's going to exclude even the likes of Southampton and Leicester City, clubs like that. And it's, it's you know, supporters as well, you touched on that. It's going to, you might have supporters of the teams of, that are going to be in the competition. Maybe initially thinking, well, yeah, this is great. We're maybe seeing our, our team play the big sides all around Europe, but it's going to bring further problems for them as well. Um, and you're right, in the, we, football needs to look after itself. It's not just about looking after your own doorstep. And uh, there's, there's, there's a lot more, I think, and consideration that needs to be given to this. I think that's a good point that Fanny made there as well, is that like, 
there will, there will be some fans. We've sat here and looked on social media. There's some fans sitting there saying, actually, I'd rather see go and watch my team play against Barcelona one week and then go and, go and play against Real Madrid next week and then play against X, Y and Z because it's the big glamour ties. But that's a selfish viewpoint. That's not, that's not thinking of everybody else in the pyramid, people l lower down. You can't have a selfish group of teams like that and people that just think about your, yourself and that's it. This, this game is built on teams from all different parts, teams of all different levels being able to compete, being funded, being helped by the teams at the top. These glamour clubs, the big six, etc. these mm -hmm. clubs and the other big teams in the Premier League, that money filters through. It's needed. Mm -hmm. We need them to be here and to be focused on what we're doing here. The Champions League's there. That's a great tournament. It's a great competition. What else do you need? Or what else are you looking for other than money? Well, they've edged towards more control and more money for the last 20 or 30 years. It just feels like whatever they get, it's not enough, is it? And I know people are saying, well, you know, the current football pyramid has the Premier League at the top, and this was created from a breakaway. But the important point for anyone listening to this is the Premier League is not a closed shop. It's not a monopoly. You can be relegated out of it. You can be promoted into it. And as Leicester showed a few years ago, when the circumstances are right, Anybody can Sorry, win. Sorry, so so the the the, the, the so there's 15 teams in the in this league. I'm, That's I'm, right. Yeah. I'm saying. I'm correct me if I'm wrong. And they can never. And they can never be relegated. No. They can never be taken out of this league. No. So how boring is that? I mean, we're sitting at the end of the season doing these games as as pundits, as commentators, etc., as presenters. The excitement is in not only winning the league, but there's as much excitement as who goes down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a huge part of our game. Who gets promoted from the championship? Norwich, your team have come up. It's an unbelievable story. And the excitement that goes around, all of the chat rooms, all of the social media, all of the different shows that go on, is not only just about teams at the top. Mm. It's everybody together brings the whole story. It's a bigger picture than just the, the ones at the top, the glamour teams, the glamour ties. It's not all just about that. And I know you're going to go on the radio shortly, and Robbie was looking through messages from some fans who are supportive of this because they want their club playing in those big games. But that doesn't take into account that you might be a Spurs fan travelling abroad to see your club at the bottom of this Super League, but you can't get relegated, so the game doesn't matter. We Four think first. you're going to be travelling for double the number of games outside the UK at a time where people are struggling just to keep hold of their jobs. The timing stinks. It, it even sounds almost like it's a joke in some ways, doesn't it? You, know, you think someone's put something out there, if it had been maybe just a tweet or something like that, you just dismiss it. But obviously it's not, and it's more serious than that. And it's something that's got to be given serious consideration um, and that, you know you can't make that knee-jerk reaction to it in a way. But from what we know of it, there's so much about it that seems wrong. What's going to be very interesting now is is the reaction of the governing bodies. I'd like to get your thoughts on that because there is an opportunity. I mean, the, the Premier League rules state that you can't join another league or another competition without the permission of the F, of the Premier League board. There could be a situation where you can't play for your national team if you play for one of the clubs who's in this big breakaway. There's a situation where UEFA could expel teams from next season's Champions League if they sign up to this. There's a situation where the Premier League could take teams out of the Premier League for signing up to this. All of that, as much as this is bad for football, all of that is bad for football. Mate, listen, I, I, everything that you state there, you, you can't, I can't look at this and see a positive angle other than for those teams that are selected to be in. What is it, what, who's the selection? What, what is the selection process? Well, I think those Who teams made decide these teams themselves? the top six? They did. But I, that's what I don't get. And you know what? You have to say as well, you've got to pay respect to them two German teams, Dortmund and Bayern Munich, yeah. asked to be, and Paris Saint-Germain as well, by the way, a team that have been spoken about as, oh, they've got owners who are this and that and been hammered. They declined going in this league, by the way, and said, no, actually, we don't believe in this. Mm. The two German teams, clubs that fans have a big influence on and input in terms of the run of the football club, they're, they're the people that are cared about at them football clubs, it seems, and it shows in the decision to stay away from this, this crazy idea. So worrying, Rob, isn't it? Yeah, it is, you know, but, you know, I think Real's summed up really, really well, as, a, as a, has Franny. So, yeah, worrying, I think it's a disgrace. You know, I worry about the pyramid system, you know, and the clubs who are fighting for survival. 